Team Keep It Clean, um, wanted to catch up with y'all real quick uh, to go over this Calais Campbell signing and just to try to look at it from a different light. Um, I don't know if it came across in the previous video. I was not the most excited over the Calais Campbell signing. I don't have a problem with it at all, but it's, I don't feel like that's like the needle mover. That's the move where it's like, all right, even on defense, like, all right, we got Calais Campbell back. Our defense is going to be shut down now. Now. With the move, I do understand. Now, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't make us worse. It does not make the Baltimore Ravens defense worse. But it doesn't necessarily make them better, at least comparing them to last year. Now, um, something that my guy Cam, a couple of things that a lot of y'all pointed out and stuff, but something that my guy Cam pointed out to me um, is that when he saw the Ravens re-sign Calais Campbell, that they listed Calais Campbell as a defensive tackle. Now, normally, let me know if I'm wrong, but normally when you see Calais Campbell, he's listed as a DN. So I don't know if that's a little bit telling that the Ravens are going to be doing a little bit, bit more for a three and whatnot. So we'll see. Um, but something else that a lot of y'all have pointed out to me as well and, and pointed out is just the fact that maybe now with this new defensive scheme, Calais Campbell can be more effective. So that's another thing as well, um, because if they... We know how it was under Wink, and, and Clay's Campbell wasn't bad under Wink, but maybe under this new scheme, he can be better. Um, and also, another thing, too, uh, as far as the rotation, it's something we mentioned in the rotation. How does, how's that rotation going to be? Um, a lot of people, we, we know Clay's Campbell, he was still, he's still a good player. He can still play. Um, but if he is on more of a rotational, if, if he's on more of a rotation, um, and you can limit his wear and tear. You can limit his um, just being gassed, like straight up. Um, and you can get some of the younger guys out there. That can go a long way for one Calais Campbell. Um, and some other things that people will mention that we talked about too, how he's really good in, in, in run defense. He excelled in that. Helped the Ravens out a lot with that. You know, Calais Campbell, he's stretching, grab you with those big long arms and tell you you ain't going nowhere. Um, but he, uh, and we saw that a lot of times when when he would grab somebody. Like, it would look like he was like uh, Mr. Fantastic because his arms are just so long and they just stretch so far. This is crazy. But anyway, um, but as far as the pass rusher, the interior pressure as a pass rusher. That is still one of my biggest concerns with this defense because that's something that would just take them a long way. Um, but with that, I, I think that um, a lot. some people brought up, hey, well, Calais Campbell, he gets double teamed a lot. He gets double teamed a lot so that can open it up for other people. Now that's, again, where that rotation that comes into play. Who are, gonna, who are those other people going to be? Um, we, of course, still got the draft coming up, so we'll see what the Ravens do there. They, of course, could still continue to make moves, um, and, they, and they could cut some guys, release some guys, trade some guys. They could extend some guys. They got some options on what they can do as far as money. But something that I have been thinking about when it came to uh, just this whole Calais Campbell thing, um, I, I was thinking, I, I thought of Ray Lewis. And the reason that I thought of Ray Lewis and they obviously are not the same player. They play two completely different positions. And Ray Lewis, even before his second uh, Super Bowl, he had already been a Super Bowl champion. Because, again, it was his second Super Bowl. Um, so you can't you can compare them, but you can't compare them. But the way that I'm comparing them is not as far as play styles or whatever, but just their impact. We know this is a leadership move. We know that for sure. Um, but with Ray Lewis, remember him in his, uh, his last year, um, in the NFL on the Ravens 2012. Was he the Ray Lewis of old? No. <laughs> Not at all. I, and I will never forget that first game where Ray Lewis, boy, he, he came through all big and bad. And, uh, oh, no, no, no. He slimmed up. That's what it was. He slimmed up because he was trying to, they said he was talking about how it was a passing league and he was trying to keep up with the tight ends and stuff more. Um, but he he got stiffed on him. He just it, it wasn't looking too good for him early on. Um, but he was not the same Ray Lewis that he once was long ago. He could still play, but he, he wasn't the same guy. But that team obviously still won a Super Bowl. Now, are the Ravens right now Super Bowl team? In my honest opinion, no. I do not think that they are a Super Bowl team right now. Of course, anything could happen. And I hope some, anything does happen and they end up winning the Super Bowl. 
But based off of them right here, right now, honest opinion is they are not a Super Bowl team, in my opinion. And anybody that says, oh, man, you don't think Ravens are a Super Bowl team, you're a fake fan? I don't care what you say about that. I really don't. So many fans keep, they, I keep seeing so many fans try to dictate how other people are fans. And you, you can say that, oh, you're not allowed to say that. Under, no, shut up. Don't want to hear it. Because all that chatter about who's a real fan and who's a fake fan, that is some, some of the biggest waste of time ever. But anyway, like I said, I don't think Ravens are a Super Bowl team right now. Um, but with Ray Lewis back then, um, with him not being the, his best version of himself, they still accomplished a lot. But why? Well, in front of him, he had Lodi Nada, he had Art Jones, he had Pernell McPhee, he had Terrell Suggs, he had Paul Kruger. Remember when Paul Kruger got a sack and he started doing that? Anyway, um, he had Kerry Williams, who, who, who was up and down. I mean, he was solid. He was up and down. Though. He had Ladarius Webb. Shout out to Webby. He had, um, obviously, Ed Reed. Uh, but, oh, DeJuan, was it DeJuan Landry? Who, oh, Bernard Pollard. It was Bernard Pollard. Super Bowl year. Bernard Pollard. So, my point is, he, Ray Lewis was not the best version of himself. But around him, the guys that surrounded him, they helped make his job a lot easier. They really did. And then him, as far as being a leader, being an emotional leader, and still being a good player, he helped them out as well. They looked up to him for motivation. They looked up to him for the pregame speeches and all that. They looked up to him, just period. They looked up to him. So with Calais Campbell, what I hope these Ravens can do, and when you think about the defense, at least the back end, um, you look at the safety. You got a good safety in Marcus Williams. You look at your other safety. You got, you got a straight safety in Chuck Clark. Um, and then you look at the, the secondary. You, you got Marlon Humphrey. And, I, oh, man, Marlon Humphrey said something on Twitter yesterday that I super appreciated. I loved it so much. Somebody asked Marlon Humphrey, are you top 10? Or are you either top five or top 10 corner? One of them two. And he said, based off of last year, no. <laughs> no. But I'm looking to get back there. Oh, man, I just love it when people are honest, man. I, I love that so much when people are just honest and straight up. Um, anyway, uh, but, yeah, so you got Marlon Humphrey. You got Marcus Peters. Um, so you got Brandon Stevens, who he, he kept looking better and better and more and more comfortable. Um, so you brought Josh Bynes back. He's solid. You, you still got Patrick Queen. Um, and, again, Josh Bynes made Patrick Queen's job a lot easier. Uh, but... You also have Michael Pierce, um, and as far as your edge guys, yeah, there's, there's Roderick Washington, there's Matt Abike up and coming, um, there's Derek Wolf, uh, and then Adafi Away, Tyus Bowser when he comes back healthy. And they still got some more moves to make, of course, with the draft and, and possibly free agency too. But my point is that with Calais Campbell, I'm hoping that as far as on defense, it can be one of those approaches where, okay, yeah, we know this guy is not who he once was which we all do. We all know that. Everybody knows that. Um, he is not a bad player. He is not the player that's going to put us over the top. But at the same time, um, we didn't get worse from keeping him. Um, so, but let's also have nice pieces around him and effective pieces around him, significant pieces around him just to make us that much better. Um, and I know with a lot of Ravens players, um, a lot of Ravens, they, they're banking on health. Because last year, they, they lost so many people just to, to a lack of health, to so much injury. And it was sad to see. Um, but that, yeah. So, but I, I, th I think in my opinion, it can't just be, you can't just bank on the guys to come back. You can't just bank on everybody who's coming back. I, I think you still have to do more. You still have to do more. Calais Campbell's nice, but let's really get a young gun up in there who can really bring some interior pressure. Josh Bynes is nice, but let's get a, a young guy, a linebacker, somebody who can really who you can see for the foreseeable future. I like my, my guy. I was watching my guy, um, Ungatekeepers. I was watching his video earlier, and he, he said, and it's true. I'm like, oh, man, that just makes too much sense. He was like, Ravens might as well sign Josh Bynes to a three-year deal. Because they keep bringing them back and bringing them back and bringing them back. And they do. They might as well. I'm like, oh, yeah. They, they might as well. But Ravens, they got to uh, find a way to solidify that inside linebacking unit. But another conversation for another day. Now, um, whew, the Dwayne Haskins news, man. Um, 
that was just crazy, man. That was really crazy. Um, young dude, uh, it's just wild how it, you just never know, man. You never know. That's what I always talk about on here. Tell people you love them. Tell people you care about them. Check up on your people. Check up on your friends, your family, whoever, man, because you just never know. Um, and to not, like, don't get caught up in all the stupid stuff, man. Don't get caught up in all the, the if, if you debating somebody back and forth, okay, cool, but don't let you, y'all just debate, like, just keep you angry at somebody. Oh, man, I hate them because they didn't agree with me. No. If y'all disagree, okay, disagree. That's fine. Ain't nothing wrong with disagreeing. Nothing wrong with disagreeing. Nothing, like, nothing at all wrong with disagreeing. Just leave it at that. Don't keep it. Don't keep, like, hating your heart for people. Don't. No, man. It's just. It ain't it ain't worth it, man. Cause you just never know, man. You you never know what could happen. And it what what Dwayne Haskins, that sucks, man. It sucks bad. Um uh, we know that the NFL is a business. Um we know uh it should be treated as such, but they are still people. They are still people that have real emotions. That have real families, that have real mothers, real fathers, grandparents, siblings, sons, daughters, all that stuff. The whole Adam Schefter thing, uh, it was tasteless, man. It, it, it was so tasteless, man. Because it's not like it's not like this dude is out here struggling. Um, like it's not like he was, oh, he was once an NFL quarterback, now he's on the streets or something. No. It's not like he just Decided to uh, it's, it's not like he couldn't get picked up on a team or something like that It's not like he just decided to randomly retire or anything like that It's not like he just the, the situation is not so many other things But the way that Adam Schefter originally worded his report On Dwayne Haskins with how he led with Oh, Dwayne Haskins who was struggling to make the Steelers team And struggle with the, the Washington football team or commanders Whatever he said he got hit by a car and died. It's like, really? If the, he just died and that's what we doing? Come on, man. What's that, man? Just treat, treat people better, man. When we get on here, we talk about these different players and whatnot. You already know it's, it's, it ain't nothing personal. That's, and that's why we make sure we, we try to talk about everybody with respect. With respect. Not saying, oh, this guy, he's terrible at his job. Oh, this guy sucks. Oh, this guy should never see a football field again. Nah. You don't need to be on none of that stuff. If a guy has a bad game, okay, he ain't have a good game. He had a bad game. He did, Today wasn't definitely wasn't his best game. Oh, he struggled today. Oh, he's got to get better at that. He should get better at that. But saying people, oh, you suck. You suck this and this and that. And you're terrible. And, da -da -da -da, and, and it's just... You got to have respect for people, man. That's it, man. I was just disappointed with that. And then I hear the, um, I heard the whole clip from the dude, uh, Gil Brandt, where he was talking about Dwayne Haskins. I'm like, man, people are just so sick, man. People are nasty. People have, like, no regard for people's, for respect to people, man. And it, it, was, it was just sad to see, or sad to hear, man. Um, so, be good to people, y'all. I love y'all. appreciate y'all. And we out, man.